So we know Halo Infinite will be $60. We know the multiplayer is free to play, but how much is this game really going to cost? Well, stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. How's it going everybody? It's Kevin here once again giving you another news and informational video when it comes to Halo. If you like these news and informational videos, please make sure to tap that like button as it lets me know and want to see some more content like this. It helps out the YouTube algorithm so more people get a chance to see this video to stay in the know with everything going on with Halo. With the recent pre-orders going on currently right now on Amazon and on Best Buy and various other websites out there, it's got me thinking, how much is this game really going to cost? Like, yes, we know it's going to cost $60 up front to play this game, even with a free multiplayer. But first of all, I really hope 343 is able to reward the players who buy the full game. Because even with Call of Duty, where most people were playing Warzone, you still have to pay the $60 for the full multiplayer experience and the campaign experience. And on top of that, Spec Ops. And from what we have right now, all we know is that it's campaign for $60? That's quite steep, to be honest. I'm assuming we'll have some other modes thrown in there as well. But knowing the multiplayer is going to be free to play and that's where most people are going to be spending their time playing Halo after the initial launch of the game makes me wonder how much is this game really going to cost? I mean we do know that there are going to be microtransactions in Halo Infinite. That's confirmed, that's happening, you can hate it all you want, it's going to happen and it's confirmed by Chris Lee as well that there will be no paid loot boxes in this game. Oddly enough Chris Lee specifically says paid loot boxes. Not meaning that loot boxes are out of the game completely. I mean, they could go with an Apex Legends system where you still get loot boxes, but it's free through experience to gain while playing the game. But then this also makes me wonder, how are they gonna monetize this game? Well, knowing that 3 for 3 isn't the most imaginative group when it comes to their microtransactions in the games, they seem to be kind of following along the trends of everybody else who kind of does the similar things, especially in Halo 5. We got a ton of paid loot boxes in that game, uh, just like how we had in previous other titles throughout the first person shooter shooter genre and so that would make sense that they kind of follow along trends with this one as well and what's the most popular fair trend that people have kind of settled into and agreed upon is the battle pass system currently right now in the mcc they are going with a battle pass system and a part of me just makes me believe that this is like a trial run of some sorts with the community with mcc using a battle pass system just kind of working out the logistics of it how it could function in the game though so then once it comes into halo infinite we're familiar with that kind of system and you know we can just kind of grind through it as we do normally. The MCC's battle pass is free to play. Now why do I bring this up? It's because Clover, who's been a known leaker from a lot of stuff for Halo Infinite, he leaked out the grapple hook before the game release and various other things like the single shot style that we've seen in almost all the cutscenes within Halo Infinite. So he's been rather accurate and it would, would make sense for here. He says right here in a tweet saying that Halo Infinite free to play, Arena aims to be 120 frames on the Series X, Battle Pass system, customization is completely new to Halo, which we recently did just get some new information on customization when it comes to Halo. There are codes you receive for buying different action figures you find at Target, type in their code, you get armor coatings, much like weapon coatings that we've been seeing, but like skins, but they call them coatings, whatever. But again, more stuff that seems to be correct from him and that battle pass system would seem to be about right. And it seems to be a general consensus of the right way to do things. But this also means then, how much is that battle pass going to cost? As someone who's a content creator and doing this YouTube Twitch thing part time, Knowing that I might have to buy a battle pass every season is going to be quite a pricey investment. And it's also lightly concerning because the last major shooter from Microsoft, the Gears of War 5 that came out, did get a lot of criticism for its microtransaction system as there was a lot of it. And I mean like a lot of it. And if you wanted everything, you'd have to be dropping a few thousand dollars to get everything. So I have a feeling with Halo Infinite, it's going to be kind of a content system uh, much like we see like with Modern Warfare and other games where you're not really meant to be able to buy everything that's customizable. I think you kind of just pick and choose what you like beyond just a battle pass system. And I want to kind of also showcase uh, one game in particular, Call of Duty Modern Warfare, who I know, yes, it's Call of Duty. I know it's terrible. I know. But they've been getting a lot of praise for their microtransaction system for a Call of Duty game, which is 
It's the first time I've ever heard good things about it. And they actually reward your time for playing the game. So here we are in Call of Duty, guys. So this is the one of the screens you first see is going to be to buy the Battle Pass because that's where they make their money from. Basically, the way that the Battle Pass works, so you get that instant jump for 20 tiers. It jumps you 20 tiers ahead for just buying it straight ahead. But you still have to grind your way through, even after buying it, which is, I think, a good way to reward players for spending time in your game so you don't just instantly buy everything that you want. I also think it also kind of helps out with those whales that are kind of known for microtransactions. But the Battle Pass, standard Battle Pass, is 1,000 COD points. We'll get into that concept a little bit later, how much does it actually cost you. You get an extra double bundle, which gives you an additional uh, 20 tiers for uh, 2,400 COD points. But if you look at the Battle Pass right here, you can see that there are generally kind of like these tiers, kind of similar to what we have, if you think of it in a way. There's 100 uh, items within this Battle Pass, and you can kind of look through the different items. But actually, through playing through, you do earn 100 COD points you know, every so often. And I actually went through the battle pass and you actually can see I tallied it up and you actually earn 1300 COD points in total for playing through the battle pass. That's just rewarding players for putting the time into your, their game and playing it. They're literally giving their players free money, which I think is going to be a very important thing if Halo Infinite is going to be implementing a battle pass, which I highly suspect that they will, that basically what you can do with Call of Duty, if you earn all 100 tiers, you literally have free money to buy the next season's battle pass. You can continue on through there, which I think is an extremely fair system to at least reward people who are playing the game and sticking within your ecosystem and staying time, boosting your player count numbers and things like that. I think it's very fair to do that. And it is a very feasible grind. Like it's definitely takes a lot of time to do. You got to be like a dedicated player, but if you're the kind of person I say who plays Call of Duty every day or is like that game, that's the game that you play pretty much like we do all with Halo right now, right? that it would make sense if you hit 100 tiers. And you can see here's the store that they have. This is kind of where individual microtransactions kind of happen here. Uh, you have different things like weapon skins, weapon charms, stickers, and things like that. Different operators and different kind of weapon camos and things like that. I'm assuming we'll probably see something very similar to this as well. But like in the store is probably you'll find individual like weapon camos or uh, character patterns and skins you can put on your Spartan armor and stuff like that. Again, like there's a, there's a lot of different things you can buy within this uh, season right now for season six and Call of Duty, and you're not really meant to be able to buy everything. Like it's a thousand COD points for just this setup right here, which is the same price as the season pass. Of course, then you can grind your way through the season pass, and then once you have that thousand COD points, that worth thirteen hundred COD points, you can spend it in the store for free. Again, like it, at least it rewards players in some way to be able to grind out content. So you get basically free money for putting the time in because time is money and it's really important that, to be willing to support your player base by giving them something that's very much of value within the game. There are other systems as well like Destiny 2 where they have the free one which is kind of like a season pass but it's a little bit lesser in content and then you have the paid version of the season pass which involves a lot more content a lot more resources and things like that you can get in the game which i feel is a little unfair for people who don't want to buy in and play essentially there are multiple ways halo infinite can go in when it comes to implementing the microtransactions i highly suspect a season pass i suspect individual purchases on top of that as well i just really hope 343 puts in the effort to give the player base something of true value when it comes to being able to put the time in and play the game because I, and I think that they will because there's been a general push to get, make sure people are on your platform, in your game, in your ecosystem as much as possible. You don't have to absolutely monetize every little thing that's possible. I mean, hell, Activision is actually doing something nice with the community when it comes to the Battle Pass system. I have a feeling Microsoft will do the same as well as they've been focusing a lot more on the player experience rather than profits. Well, let me know in the comment section down below guys, what are your thoughts on microtransactions within Halo Infinite? Yes, they're gonna come, they're gonna stay, you can't get away from it. Are you okay with this kind of system? Would you like to see something different? Let me know in the comment section down below, I do read all of them and try to reply to most of them as well. If you're new to the channel or missing any content from me, check out the videos on the screen right over here. I got a link to it in all my news and informational videos if you've been out of the loop for the last few days or so. Thank you so much for watching, I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.